for long, uh, Mexican immigration has been the, the major source of uh, immigration to, to the United States. And over the last, probably about the last eight, ten years, you're really seeing a, a major shift uh, so that um, from the time of the economic uh, recession that we had, you see a lot of jobs that are lost, particularly in the, in the uh, construction industry. So there are states like uh, Nevada, for example, that lost uh, a lot of jobs and uh, they depend very heavily on Mexican immigration. So you see that kind of decline there. Um, then you see kind of the um, violence that is going on in Mexico as well. So that also has, uh, has um, had an impact on, on the volume of migration, particularly from, for people who are the traditional uh, migrants, that is individuals who are low levels of it, have low levels of education, uh, are work, going to work in service, construction kind of jobs. Um, and then so th those you have uh, playing a role. And then you have in terms of that violence also has shifted in terms of who is coming to the United States. So then you have individual with individuals with resources, uh, individuals who themselves or family members may have been uh, kidnapped before or faced uh, direct violence and they have the economic uh, resources to be able to move their family. So you really see that shift. And then another part that is also playing a, a role in the, in the shifts in the demography of Mexican immigrants mm -hmm is the aging that is taking place in, in Mexico. So Mexico, even though we don't think of it, uh, but uh, Mexico is becoming an older country uh, very rapidly. So we used to have a very much of an excess labor force in Mexico, simply because there, were, there was a high level of fertility. So if we look at back 1960 or so, the average Mexican women, woman was giving birth to about seven, uh, uh, was having seven babies, and that has dropped now. And, it's about 2.2 or so, compared to about 1.9 in the U.S., so very much similar. But because it occurred so rapidly, you really see, uh, you're, we're going to see a real shift in the aging of the population. And and then, and then therefore also the workforce, right? Exactly. The size of the workforce. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. so that yeah. excess labor that Mexico had before, that the U.S. has depended very heavily on, uh, that's shrinking and shrinking, and we're going to see more of that. So demographers suggest that kind of the peak that we saw in the 1990s and the early 2000s, we probably won't see that volume again, simply because of these forces. And then you also have um, in Mexico, uh, despite the uh, violence that was taking place and so forth, the economy was picking up and, uh, and you also have Mexico investing more in education as well. So you're, Mexico is training a lot of engineers and so, and so that the face of immigrants in the coming decades may shift more uh, towards uh, people that, are, that we have not seen but have been seen in the Silicon Valley and other kinds of... Uh, so uh, higher education, higher skill, lower workforce, smaller workforce, but higher education, yeah, higher skills. Yeah. And very much uh, in line with kind of the NAFTA that has opened up borders and, and so forth. So uh, those are some some trends that seem to be uh, afoot. A different kind of immigration, right? right? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Totally. yeah, yeah. And and so so on one hand, we have the economic conditions in the U.S. affecting that, where uh -huh. when the economy declines, then there is less need for the more traditional kinds of, of immigrants yeah. that come up for construction and stuff. But then on the other hand, um, this this. Um, new kind of immigrant coming from Mexico who may be more high, highly skilled and bringing more resources also has an economic effect here. Right, right. oh yeah, yeah, um, just like the immigrants before. Right. Because we, uh, there's been a, a lot of uh, criticism that immigrants are coming in, they're t taking jobs away, but they're really adding a lot to the economy in terms of uh, the types of jobs that they're holding, the, what we pay, for example, in hotels, what we pay for fruits and vegetables and things like that Absolutely. is being subsidized a lot by Mexico right. because those workers were educated, they're trained, and so forth, and they come to to the U.S. Yeah. So, so, so that is going to play out in the, in the coming years as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So one question is whether this shift that we've seen in terms of the, and the volume has really dropped 
immensely so that the Pew Hispanic Research Center a few years ago had indicated that there was pretty much a balance between the number of Mexicans coming into the U.S. and those that were leaving uh, the U.S. A little bit more people leaving than coming, so in that kind of decrease, uh, out-migration. Um, and for the first time, um, I think it was last year or the year before, it was Mexicans were not the largest group apprehended uh, in terms of uh, being here as undocumented immigrants along the border. Uh, so you really see these shifts that are, that are, that are taking place. Um, and one question is what, whether when the economy gets better in the U.S., mm -hmm. violence decreases in Mexico, whether we're going to see that return. And we probably will see more of what it used to be before, but not, as I indicated, not at that high level. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I guess one of the fascinating things is that, that um, there's been a lot of political rhetoric in this country about about troops on the border right. and keeping and walls and stuff like that. But but it seems like the most effective way to stem immigration from Mexico is for the U.S. economy to go go down. Yeah, and, and t <laughs> <laughs> it seems that way. Yeah, and then so uh, yeah, so so those are kind of the when and usually when when the economy is booming in, in the United States. Uh, if we look back 150 years in terms of uh, immigration from Mexico to the United States, Mexicans have been welcomed when, uh, when the economy is, is uh, good. We know uh, during the Depression where we have the, uh, the uh, repatriation program that Mexicans were uprooted and sent back to Mexico, including those that were born in the U.S. at the time that the economy was really bad. Just a few years later, uh, the U.S. finds itself in World War II and what do we do then? We create the Bracero program that brought in 4.8 million uh, 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 contract laborers between 1942 and 1964. So it lasted all that time period. So you always have this, eco the economy plays a role. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. That's yeah. absolutely fascinating. And, and, and um, it also sounds a little like perhaps the um, political rhetoric in the U.S. is um, a, a lagging um, the realities, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and, and then you, you always have had the racism that has played a role in terms of that has been pretty consistent, uh, that, uh, that we've seen it against Mexicans in particular. Uh, so that's been pretty, pretty constant, and you see it, the rise, you have the spark plugs like uh, Donald Trump and so forth uh, uh, adding to the fire and things like that. But again, uh, much of that rhetoric that we find is kind of the old school kind of uh, demography of, uh, of Mexico at that time, where there was an excess labor force, and one where you really see in a very different demographic reality right now in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's, it's not looking at what's happening right now yeah, and, yeah. and just reacting. And, and yeah. Yeah, and, and then you're going to see here in the, in the U.S we're going to need immigrants more and more simply because we're becoming an aging country just like a lot of the European countries. So we have baby boomers that were born from 1946 all the way to 1964. They're reaching retirement age. 2011 was the first cohort that reached age 65. So between 2011 and 2029, we're going to have this massive increase of uh, elderly in, in this country. And we're going to have increasingly the need for people who are going to be doing labor, service sector kind of jobs that Mexicans have, in the past have, uh, have played a, a significant role. And, and pulling on now people who are younger than the boomers uh -huh, from exactly. Mexico, yeah. which, is a, which is a tighter, you said, a smaller yeah. generation. Uh -huh, yeah. So that, that's going to be fascinating. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Speaking as one of those boomers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also. <laughs> but, 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 so there will be a, an, an interest in pulling people up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pulling people back to yeah. the U.S. Yeah. 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 Even against um, going in the, in the face of the, of what in other areas of the country is a, is a lot of racism. Right. And yeah. Going yeah. in the face of the, of the political rhetoric of we, they're taking jobs away yeah. and when in fact we need them. And we've seen kind of the, uh, the discussion taking place on uh, immigration reform mm -hmm. and we've heard it back in 2007, 2008 and so forth. In that time period we saw it earlier when uh, uh, 
George uh, Bush and uh, Vicente Fox were talking about right before 9-11 uh, and so forth. And there's been that over the last few years, we've heard uh, immigration reform. Uh, but you also have to take a look at who's making money out of, so you have employers, for example, obviously are making money from cheap uh, people who are here without, without uh, proper documentation. But you also have the, the rise of the, uh, of the detention center industry, which is making big money. So groups like the uh, Corrections Corporation of America, CCA, the GEO group, and so forth, have really made a massive amount of money on, on, uh, on undocumented immigrants. And you have people who are in very powerful positions that, uh, that are very much against uh, uh, creating a pathway to citizenship because there's so much money involved here. So I think that, uh, that you look at that, you, and we look at the border, for example, we look at the uh, escalation of, uh, of security, uh, technology, and, uh, and so forth. So you have all these corporations that are also making money out of, uh, out of these, uh, the, these kinds of uh, technologies and the securing of the border. And then we talk about people, uh, particularly Republicans, saying, well, we want immigration reform, but what they concentrate on is in securing the border, that we want to secure the border even more. There's a report that just came out that, uh, that was talking about uh, border communities, uh, residents complaining that you see uh, uh, border patrol and other individuals that are patrolling the border sitting around idly in uh, uh, rather than necessarily catching people that, as they're coming across. Uh, so, so you have those, uh, those kind of factors, I think, that, uh, that fit into, into this bigger equation. So, so when people are talking about immigration reform, they're talking about the technology of securing the border. They're not talking right. about the dreamers. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. And, yeah. and then the some people people that say, okay, we'll, we'll talk about the pathway to citizenship only when the border is 100% secure, which is really one impossible and two impossible to measure as, uh, as well. Right, so when, when, when it's over, you, you can't say when it ever is over, so it just postpones it indefinitely. Right. Uh -huh. Because you've, said, you've set up a completely impossible thing to, right. to measure. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that is about the, the money and the corporations. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and then there's the political aspects, that there's a the fear that with the demographic growth of the Latino population that, uh, that you have people, that if you provide them citizenship status, they have the right to vote and then that, uh, that that'll hurt particularly the, the Republican Party. And of course, Donald Trump is doing a lot of that to, to hurt the, that, uh, that particular party as well. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. This is all absolutely fascinating. It's a bunch of conflicting things uh -huh. that, um, but ultimately, uh, despite all of those, all of the money and all of the corporations and stuff, there is going to be a societal pull uh -huh. to bring more people in to yeah. help to help as as boomers need it, as companies need it. So I mean, there's this there, even even among the the money class, right? Mm -hmm. The companies, right. corporations, and stuff. There is there is a, a huge conflict yeah. between this the, the companies who who need workers from Mexico, whether it's it's more more educated, uh -huh. skilled high, higher skilled workers, or whether it is it's people who are into service right. um, for boomers. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's this big conflict. Um, uh, from a societal, but also from an economic standpoint. Yeah, and you look at that aging of the country, and mm -hmm. we can see what's going on in, in Europe before, even before the refugees, political refugees from Syria are coming in, that you've had countries, for example, that have extremely low levels of fertility. We're talking about Germany, for example, we're talking about France, we're talking about Spain, Italy, these countries that have, on average, about 1.3, 1.4, very few babies and countries that are aging very rapidly, where about a quarter of the population is already 65 and older, and they need the workers. They need and then you see worker, workers, uh, migrants coming in from, from Africa, for example, from the Middle East and other parts that are coming to these particular locations. And increasingly, uh, we're going to be faced with that, uh, that situation as well. But uh, the, our primary uh, workforce, immigrant workforce, Mexico, 
itself is aging as well and we're not seeing that uh, excess labor. So when when we're looking in this country to bring people in to try to help, it, it may have to come from other places. Yeah, like Central America, we've seen the, the, the push uh, in uh, places like Honduras, the, the violence. China has always been a, a massive, uh, increasingly a massive uh, source of uh, a workforce. So we will see those kind of shifts. Mm -hmm. And as people will come from other places, but that's a very interesting thing to to explain also why, on one hand, we look at Europe and say they're being so much more generous than, uh -huh. than we are in the United States with with allowing people to come in and and, and uh -huh. with with refugees. But there's some other reasons for it besides they're just benevolence. Right. Uh, we've seen that now the last few days, uh, the Obama administration is talking about perhaps opening up for political refugees and we uh, our country has kind of had a hands-off kind of a arm's length kind of approach saying that this is a European problem but we have been a major source in, in bringing about the wars warfare and uprooting mm -hmm. those uh, those refugees I mean it kind of there's some fairly straight lines back yeah to, yeah to US intervention yeah to, and it has been then the push by um, uh, groups that are advocating for the human rights of immigrants and so forth that are pushing the U.S. to take a more active stance in uh, in dealing with the refugee crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, the, and there certainly is, um, as as you mentioned earlier too, with the with the refugees coming from Central America as well. Uh -huh. I mean, there's been a, there's been a large push uh, to to the folks who are fleeing the the violence and poverty uh -huh. and and horrible conditions yeah. there. But again. Uh, that's also tied up with the Corrections Corporation of America right. and uh -huh. GEO and yeah. private prisons yeah. and yeah. vested interests who uh -huh. have money to make yeah. mm -hmm. by incarcerating people. Right. Yeah. 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 It's an, it's, um, so do you see either of those sides prevailing, uh, the, the side that needs the workers? in this country, that needs younger workers in this country, um, or the, the um, companies who profit so much from keeping our borders closed? Mm, yeah, uh, there will probably, there'll probably be some, some shifts. We've seen uh, the discussion about uh, guest workers and so mm -hmm. forth, a guest worker program, even though people who are advocating for immigrants always talk about the, the dangers of that. We've seen it in the Placeto program mm -hmm. and others, that there have been the great exploitation of uh, immigrant labor and and so forth that is uh, that has taken place, but that might be one area where we'll see some changes because there are a lot of Republicans that are in favor of uh, guest worker kind of programs where the people would come in for a certain period of time and then they they're returned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although although if I, if memory serves, that's part of the 11 million in the United States. Many of those people came here very legally. And, and overstay. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. is yeah. part of... Yeah, and that's a lot of the discussion also right. that we're putting up all the security mm -hmm. along the border. Right. A large majority of people are not coming across right. illegally, but rather they're coming with proper documentation, getting in and then overstaying. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So those walls will mean nothing right. to but, those people. But for the dollars for corporations, they do. Well, of course, yes, yeah. right. They do mean something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's some pretty good profits along uh -huh. the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, so, so is there... Um, in this research that you did, were there things that surprised you? I mean, were you surprised to find any... any? Uh... I think, uh, for the most part, I think uh, people who have been following uh, Mexican immigration uh, kind of suspected that, uh, that this was going on in terms of, uh, the one, the decline, uh, and that the Pew has been very good in terms of providing uh, uh, updates, annual updates. Uh, but kind of the shifts in, in terms of the economic status, the socioeconomic status of Mexican immigrants, I think we knew it, but it was more anecdotal kind of information. And here's San Antonio, I think. San Antonio we've seen with the violence, uh, more people with economic resources are moving from Monterrey and other places, settling here. Uh, but a lot of this has been anecdotal. Uh, but f for the first time, I think with the American Community Survey data, which is the data set that I used, it allowed us to kind of capture the before the uh, the, the economic recession and after, and have enough uh, enough uh, uh, data and uh, observations to be able to see that shift. And you really do pick it up there in terms of uh, 
people who are coming in with higher levels of education, people who are more likely to be speaking English, mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, people who, even though it's still relatively small, it's something like 7% or so, are um, people who have uh, are U.S. naturalized citizens, mm -hmm. but it, that compares to about 3% in, in the past. So, uh, so you almost had a doubling, although the base is relatively small. And even though you have uh, men continue to be the primary uh, groups that are Im immigrating to the United States, you see a greater presence of women in, uh, in this time period than, than five years earlier. I, I, on another historical note, though, that goes all the way back to the Mexican Revolution and who came to San Antonio uh -huh. at that point. Yeah. Uh, Henry V. Gonzalez's family yeah. came here. They were they had enormous resources. Right. The people who came in that group uh -huh. were um, were publishers. They yeah. were doctors. They exactly. were they were lawyers. They were people who had plenty of of resources and who came here and who populated parts of the city, uh -huh. yeah. Monte Vista, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. parts of the city that are that are very much in contrast with the stereotypes of, of yeah. immigrants from Mexico. Yeah. So it's and a hundred years later mm -hmm. we see kind of exactly. uh, this same uh, exactly. phenomenon taking place. Exactly. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's that's absolutely fascinating. But it also it also goes to the relationship that San Antonio has had uh -huh. that is very unique yeah. to Mexico, which is a very different relationship than just of a place where where it was unskilled workers. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, so it's a much more complex relationship. Uh -huh. Yeah, so very different than other uh, Texas cities, Houston, yeah. Dallas, and you look at uh, at the demography of the Latino population and the Mexican population in particular in Houston and Dallas compared to. Uh, to San Antonio, it's tremendously different. Uh, um, for for the most part, here in San Antonio, we're talking about more individuals who are multi generations, fifth, sixth generations. Many of those coming from uh, from the, the the fleeing of the uh, Mexican Revolution, much more so than the other cities that have been much more recent immigrants that have come uh, to 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 the U.S. Or and seasonal or cyclical. Ex exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then the extent to which you've had the economic kind of base of this very selective uh, groups of immigrants that were coming during the uh, Mexican Revolution. They were able to really create an economic base of a middle class here in, uh, in San Antonio. And we're likely to see that again here. And with NAFTA and these kind of, where we're economically at least uh, uh, opening borders, that these are going to be individuals. You, have, you see the young empresarios here in San Antonio, some of our own UTSA students are people who are studying business and so forth that are uh, totally bilingual in English and Spanish, mm -hmm. uh, have one foot in Mexico, one foot here. These are going to be individuals, really, that are going to be, I think, movers and shakers in terms of the, the future and um, taking advantage of those economic opportunities of, uh, of the and two being countries. Being bicultural and being, being um, bicultural uh, and bilingual yeah. and, uh -huh. and all of that. And, and this is terrific and you're saying this as we come up on the, on the anniversary of the Greek uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>